Hello fourth grade. So today we're going to make these Kimmy Cantrell relief masks or portraits. He likes to call them his portraits. So we are going to create an asymmetrical portrait similar to the way that Kimmy Cantrell, the contemporary artist, makes. And remember that asymmetry, it's different on both sides. So you don't have a line of symmetry where it's the same on, same on both sides. And it's abstract because it's not realistic. It doesn't look like a photograph. Real people don't look like this. And so on the first day, we are going to design our mask and make some paper patterns to use with our clay on the second day when we create these out of clay. So I have some Kimmy Cantrell visuals for you to look at. Lots of different examples of his artwork. And they're for you to just look at and reference when you are making your paper patterns. You're going to get two half sheets of paper to work on. One of the papers, you're going to choose a shape of one of the base parts of Kimmy's masks. This one's kind of skinny. It has a chunk cut out here. This one is more curved at the top and then angled at the bottom. So I want you to look for a general shape of the mask that you like. And I'm going to go with that one. And when you draw this on your half sheet, I want it to fill the space. This is about the amount of clay that you're going to get. And so if you draw your mask this big on the paper, your mask is only going to be that big and you're not going to use up all the clay that I give you. And why not, on the only time you get to use clay all year, why not use all the clay that I give you? So I'm going to draw the base part of the mask on the first paper. And I like it nearly touches the top, it nearly touches the bottom, and it reaches both sides. If you were to do a skinnier mask like this one, you might not have it as wide. But you want it to fill the paper. And so what I'm doing basically, what I've drawn right here, is this green part of the mask, the base part, the part that the pieces sit on top of. And you're going to cut that out. And then you're going to do on the second paper, you're going to do the facial features. And you're going to draw each one individually on the second piece. And remember, it's asymmetrical, so the eyes aren't the same. So you're going to draw two different eyes. Um, you're going to draw a nose. It's tends to, his noses tend to be long and skinny. And then you're going to be drawing a mouth. And he does his mouth a couple of different ways. He does it with the top lip and the bottom lip separate or he does more of an O or a circle, a donut kind of shape. So I'm going to draw the nose first and I'm going to do one of his pretty typical noses. And then I need an eye. I think I'm going to go with maybe this eye here. But maybe if you wanted to do the other kind of mouth it would be the top lip and then the bottom lip. You would just draw them attached, but when you cut them out, you cut them out in two pieces. All right, so I'm going to cut out these facial features and then I'm going to lay them on top of this base to make sure they fit. Now, you don't want your facial features to be too small. I've seen a lot of people do real skinny slivers of noses, and that is going to be really hard to recreate out of clay. If you have large, chunkier pieces to your mask, it's a lot easier to create out of clay. And you'll be able to create it more successfully and easier and faster than someone who draws these tiny little facial features or this tiny little mask shape. They're going to have a harder time making their mask look neat. Now I want to do kind of the donut, so I cut out a circle, but now I'm going to fold it in half and cut an arch out of the middle so I get that donut shape. And all my features fit on this mask really nicely. Um, I could also do some of these other shapes that Kimmy kind of adds to his masks. Now they, the facial features don't always have to fit perfectly on the mask. You can see that some of his facial features hang off. He's got the mouth kind of hanging off here, here. He's got the eyes sticking off the sides. On the, these over here. We have the mouth hanging off, the mouth hanging off, the eye sticking off the sides. 
And having some pieces hang off the sides are fine. You just don't want to have too big, uh, too much of the piece hanging off the side or it's going to droop and um, kind of fall down on the side of your mask. So on the first day, this is what you need. And then you're going to get yourself a folder. And it kind of looks like this. And on one side probably already has a, a name on it and you're just going to scrape that name off there. So I'm going to scrape and maybe either write it up here, write your name, and then the day you have art, day A, day B, day C. And then you're going to take and put all of your pieces into this folder so that next time you'll get this back <coughs> to create your mask with. And we use these pa paper patterns directly on the mask. So I have some examples. Here's my two finished examples. And here are the paper patterns that I used to create them. If you look, this is the exact same size and shape of this mask. This nose pattern is the pattern I used for this. And it fits perfectly on here. Here's the eye. Looks like I changed it up a bit. Here's another eye that fits. And then here's the mouth. And they fit perfectly on there because we use these paper patterns on the clay itself to cut right on out of here. And here's the other one. So here's this mask. It looks like I shortened it a little bit. The clay slab must have been short. And then I have this eye and this eye. Here's my nose, my mouth, and then I did these two little rectangles on there. So on day two, you're going to get a place mat, which is a piece of cardboard to work on. You're going to get a toolbox that has all the clay tools in it and a cup of water for your slip. You're also going to get your paper patterns back. If you lose any paper patterns, you lose an eye by accident, you lose your nose, just let me know. It's either on the floor somewhere where we can't find it or I can just always give you one of mine if you lose your paper pattern somehow. All right, so I'm going to pass out a clay slab to you, and it's going to look like this. And that, this might be a little bit bigger than what you get, but this is way too thick. This is very, very thick. If we look at the side, that's just way too thick. But there's a fine line between too thick and too thin. So you're going to lay this down. You can see this was the end of the slab in the box, so it's got a seam. I'm going to smooth that seam out a little bit just with my finger and a little bit of pressure, how hard I push. And then use the palm of your hand, not your fist, because if you use your fist, your knuckles are going to get um, indented into the clay. The palm of your hand, you want your clay nice and smooth. And you're going to pat out any unevenness. So my clay slab is really thick on this end and it's thinner on this end. So I don't need to pat this side of my clay slab. I need to pat this side. And you also want to move your slab around and not leave it right in the same spot on the cardboard the whole time you work or it's going to get stuck to your cardboard. Okay. So now you're going to take those paper patterns that you made on the first day of this project. You're going to get up, dump all those out of the folder. You're going to give me this folder back so we can use it again. And you're going to start with the base of your mask, this big part. And you've got to figure out where you can fit it on. Now remember, with this mask, the base of my, my drawing is bigger. So this must have not fit on my slab. So I had to cut it shorter to make it fit. So sometimes you have to make some adjustments, but it doesn't look like I have to make any adjustments with this piece because this piece of clay is pretty big. I think yours is going to be probably slightly smaller because it's going to be a little bit wasteful. I don't need all of this clay. And then you just take your paper and you press it down onto the clay. The clay is moist enough that it will hold the paper down for you. And now you can use um, either a clay wire tool to cut your clay. You can use a plastic knife. You could use a popsicle stick. You could even use the handle of a spoon to cut your clay with. But you're going to cut clear down to the cardboard and you're going to cut right next to your paper pattern. These wired in tools are wonderful at cutting the clay. They cut it very cleanly 
and quickly. <clears throat> and so I just cut the clay right next to my paper pattern. I'm going to pull my paper pattern up and you can see there's my piece that I've cut out. I don't need this paper pattern anymore so I'm going to set that aside and then I'm going to pull this off from around my mask and I'm going to set this to the side on my cardboard so I need to move my paper patterns because I'm going to use this for these pieces later. But let's focus on the base part of my mask first. I need to smooth out these edges. They get really, really rough once they're fired. So with a little bit of pressure on my finger, I'm going to rub my finger along the edge of this slab that I cut so it's not sharp to the touch after it's fired. And you might want to add just a little bit of water to your fingers to just smooth. It helps your finger run across the clay a little bit smoother. So be sure to smooth those edges. That's really important. It'll be sharp, sharp to the touch. I might even cut your fingers once it comes out of the kiln. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to pick this up so it doesn't get stuck, move it again. Kimmy does a lot of patterns on his mask, so I want you to do some sort of pattern. You could use a big doll rod, a round stick, and do polka dots. You could take a knife and cut crisscross lines. You could use a spoon and do curved lines repeated over and over again. You could do a popsicle stick. We have a small round doll rod. You could do small polka dots. A popsicle stick will make beautiful straight lines. A fork, you could carve four lines at the same time. But remember that my finished pieces have a pattern on that base part. So this one, I used a popsicle stick to just push down straight in to get this broken line. With this one, I used the round, the big round doll rod and the small round doll rod to do polka dots on the base. So you want to do your pattern first before you lay down your first facial feature. So I'm going to do um, stripes or maybe I'll do diagonal crisscross lines. So I'm going to use this popsicle stick and press gently into it, into the mask. And it doesn't reach all the way across so I've got to move it. And just do an impression. You're not cutting the mask. You're just impressing a pattern into the mask. All right, and then another thing I don't want you to forget that I forgot on my masks last year when I made these is I forgot to put a hole at the top so that I could hang it on the wall, unfortunately. So I'm going to hang these on the wall. So I'm going to take either the small round doll rod. You could use the big round doll rod, but I think that might be um, a little tricky. So take the small round doll rod near the top of your mask and push it all the way through your mask base. So pick it up and push it all the way through. Pull <clears throat> any little clay that's sticking off the back here. Pull that off and make sure it's a nice open hole that you can see all the way through the hole. And then go back to this, this piece remaining to cut out my facial features. I like to start with the nose because it goes right smack dab in the middle. And you don't want to put the nose pattern or any pattern right in the middle of the clay. You want to think of this as a piece of paper and try not to waste it. So you want to find a spot where you can fit the nose on, which I can fit it right there. And then you're going to cut the shape out just like you did the base. Then you don't need this paper pattern anymore. Pull that out. And again, it's got rough edges just like the base of your mask. So a little bit of water, not a lot. Smooth out those edges so they're not rough. And again, this is why you wanted nice, heavy, chunky pattern pieces so that you would have pieces of clay that you could hold and easily manipulate. <clears throat> Tiny little delicate pieces in clay are really hard to make look neat. Okay, and then you're going to use a tool to score, which is crisscross lines. I like to use a fork, but you honestly could use a popsicle stick. Crisscross lines. And then look to see where your nose is going to go. So I'm going to have to cr make my nose a little bit crooked, but that's okay because asymmetrical is Kimmy's piece. So, and then when you do your crisscross lines, you're scoring and slipping. You want to make sure that you don't go outside the nose too much because you have this nice, neat pattern that you've impressed and you don't want to ruin it because you've got these crisscross lines. And now I'm going to slip with a little bit of water and then press the nose right onto there with my palm on my hand. I don't want to flatten the nose too much. And then I'm going to use this big round doll rod to add 
the nostril. <clears throat> okay, so now I need to do my eyes. I have plenty of room for my eyes and my mouth, so I'm gonna put those close together anyway to save some clay. Smooth the edges, and then I need to do those details on the eyes. So I had two arches. So I need to find some sort of pointy tool that I can draw with. And this fork is probably the best thing I got. Um, I have like a little nail or screw at the bottom here, but I don't think I do. That would be good to draw with too. <clears throat> but I'm gonna take the edge of the tine of my fork and draw that right onto my eye. And the great thing about clay is if you mess up, just take your finger, rub over the top of it again, and try it again. And now I need to crisscross, score, score, crisscross lines, slip, a little bit of water, and then I don't want to ruin this thing that I've done for the drawing, so I'm going to press down with the palm of my hand, but I want to make sure that I don't press so much that I make that the arches go away. All right, and this eye hangs off a little bit on the side, but not really more than an inch, so it should be okay. And so now I have my second eye to cut out. <clears throat> and then my eye here, I'll use the fork again. That curve, and then maybe I'll use the small round doll rod to do that dot there. You really should consider scoring and slipping because they when they dry, the clay shrinks a little bit and the pieces kind of pull apart. And now I need to do my mouth. So I did the circle mouth. This can get a little tricky when you do the circle mouth. I've got plenty of clay here to work with, so I'm gonna carefully cut this out. And I can do this mouth one of two ways. I could lay this piece down for the mouth like this, and then I could cut a smaller oval out and put it on top to represent this hole, or I could actually cut the hole out of the middle. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to cut the hole out of the middle. Take one of these wire edge tools because they're the sharpest. You don't want to cut so much that this ring is skinny and thin because then it'll be fragile and break on you. So you want a nice thick ring. And then if it's too thick for you, you can always manipulate it with your hands and you can pinch it and pull it a little bit to make it skinnier. It'll also make the, whole, the mouth bigger, but as long as it fits, that's all that matters. Now, at this point, you can be done. But I have these extra pieces here that I cut. Now, if you have time, if you're fast, and you have time to add some other extra pieces, add them. But if you don't, and you cut these out, and you don't have time, then don't do them. It's OK. But you would do these just like you did the facial features. I would take this leftover clay that I have. I would find a nice piece. If I didn't have a nice piece, I would wad this up and then lay these pieces down and cut them out, score and slip them, smooth the edges, and lay them down. And then once you're finished, you're going to give me your clay mask. I'm going to scrape your initials and the day you have art on the back, and then we'll put it on the cart to dry, and you'll get it back in a couple of weeks, fired, and then we'll glaze your mask. Hello fourth grade, so today you are going to glaze your Kimmy Cantrell Relief Mask. And when you glaze, it's a lot like painting, and it's a lot like painting with temper paint. I want you to make sure you have a nice dry paintbrush, so you're going to have sponges on your table to dry your paintbrush off between colors. You can have more than one size paintbrush, because you might find that you need a smaller paintbrush, especially for the little dots in your eyes. And I'm going to start with my eyes first with the white glaze. And most of the time, the glaze that you see in the cup, that's the color it's going to be. So since this glaze is white, it's going to be white. But I do have some glazes that sometimes uh, look red. But when I fire, refire the piece, the glaze turns purple or a different color altogether. So if I have any of those glazes out that are a different color than what they look, I will have the cup marked so that you know what color you're actually getting. Now this is a 3D piece, remember, so you need to do the sides of your piece. And glaze is going to, uh, when I fire it, it's gonna become a nice shiny glass coating on the outside of your piece. And it won't 
be thick and shiny and smooth if you don't put a nice thick layer on. So I want you to go through and glaze your piece thick and even, but if you get any clumps, get those kind of brushed out of there. And I want you to do the sides of your piece, but you will not be doing the back of your piece where your initials and your room number are. If you do the back of your piece, I won't be able to glaze it because it will fuse to my kiln. It'll almost like permanent glue and I will have to use a hammer and a chisel to get it off my kiln shelves. Um, so you have to make sure you don't put any glaze on the bottom of your piece. If you do glaze the bottom of your piece, you're not paying attention, you glaze it, um, you'll just have to take it home as is and you won't have that beautiful shiny glass coating on the outside and I'm sure that would disappoint you and it certainly would disappoint me. So take your time, glaze your piece. Um, I'm done with the white but I don't want to rinse all this white off my, my um, paintbrush so I'm going to try and get most of it off before I rinse because I don't want to waste it. When I rinse it it's just going to be in the bottom of the water bowl and be a waste. So now I'm going to do the black of the eyes and try to do this as neatly as you possibly can. Get in all the little cracks and crevices, pick your piece up and look. So like I can see the hole in my eye is not glazed and so I need to get the bottom. So that's why you need to pick your piece up and look at it as you're working. Um, you don't have to hold it the whole time, but after you glaze a part, pick it up and look at it and make sure. And so this paintbrush is probably a little bit too big for the rest. I'm going to get most of this black glaze off my paintbrush and get the smaller paintbrush and finish. And try and get right real close to the white, but without touching it with this tiny paintbrush. Alright, so then after that, after you do the eyes, you can do the rest of your mask any colors you want. I'd like your nose to be one color, the base of your mask, the face of your mask to be one color, and then the mouth to be a different color and create our own asymmetrical relief mask. So it's not the same on both sides, that's what asymmetry is, it's different on each side. And now I can use whatever colors I want. Nice thick layer of glaze and make sure you get the sides. So Now sometimes, like where the nose and the mouth are so close together, I probably am not going to be able to get in there very neatly, so I might have to skip that part. If you have time to do two coats of a color, do two coats. Go over it once, let it dry, go over it a second time. All right, and you're gonna do this until the whole thing is paint is covered with glaze, painted with glaze, um, the sides, the top, but not the back, not the back. The back would be a bad, bad idea. And then you're gonna give it back to me. I will fire it and this glaze will melt and turn into glass. You'll have a beautiful, shiny, asymmetrical relief mask to take home and show off to your family. Good job, fourth grade.